Good evening, everyone. This is the virtual tour for the new exhibition at the Friedman Art Gallery at Albright, Albright College, uh, Peter Wydeen, Easton Nights. And I will be giving a, um, a little virtual tour of the space, um, but I encourage you, if possible, to come in and view the works. Um, the exhibition will be open until November 25th and the gallery is open to the public Monday, I mean, Tuesday through Friday, uh, one to five, nine to five, and Sundays from one to four. So um, we hope that you can come in and, and see this in person soon. All right. Here's a little overview of the installation itself. Let's see if we can get this camera to focus a little. There we go. So we welcome, I see people trickling in, so I'm gonna do the little introduction again. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us here for a virtual tour of the Friedman Art Gallery's new exhibition, Peter Wydeen, Easton Nights, which is a series um, that the photographer Peter Wydeen, who I know is joining us here on Facebook, um, has created and has been taking since 2015. Um, and this show will be open until November 25th. And so please have a have a look in person in the galleries if possible coming into the galleries which are open from tuesday to friday 9 a.m to 5 p.m and on sundays from 1 p.m to 4 p.m so here's a little introduction uh text um, for the exhibition which gives you a, an overview of the series itself easton nights So you can say this, this exhibition, which is um, all urban landscape f photographs um, taken at night, uh, really gives a um, ethereal quality or magical sense to these scenes that are absent of humans, which any of you watching the artist talk, I, I asked the Peter Y. Dean about, um, and I totally agree with him when he, he said that the absence of humans um, creates a stronger focus on the landscape itself and the structure of the landscape and one of the aspects that are so important to night phot photography, which is color and lighting. So I'll give um, some, there, there are many works in this show, so I'll try and give um, some close up views of the works themselves. And if you have any questions at all about the works or the artist, please, um, please add them to the chat um, in on Facebook Live because as I said I know the artist is joining us virtually and I'm sure he'd be happy to answer any questions you have. This work right here um, titled Depressed which was taken in October of 2018 is uh, one of the works he used as a as an example in his artist talk of um, the importance of words in nighttime photography um, where you see here we have on the left a sign that says vision impaired child, uh, a publicity poster that says depressed, and then McDonald's there on the right. And as he describes, it creates its own little world where the words become so important to the landscape, words that during the daytime we may pass over and not notice. At the nighttime, they become the subject matter. And this is another example of, of the words, but also of the type of lighting that is so visible in night photography. You have artificial lighting from street lights, 
neon lighting from, from stores, as we just saw. Um, and it gives this uh, quality, this kind of magical quality uh, to the works themselves. And as Peter explained in his artist talk, which I thought was really fascinating, um, that so many of these works, he's gotten comments about, you know, that the, the color temperature being slightly off in the printing or that the, the colors don't look natural, they look too artificial. Um, and as he explains, which is something I, I didn't know about, is that nighttime, the human eye has two photoreceptors, you know, rods and cones in our eyes. And in the dark during the night, um, the rods are the ones that are, are functioning. And so we cannot see color as well at night, which makes sense, but that that does not affect the uh, mechanical camera. And so the camera is able to capture color that is present at night, but that the human eye can't see. So what may look artificial to us on the wall is actually the color that is present um, in the dark, which I think is fascinating because it's both a capture it's both capturing reality, but appearing surreal to human viewers. Um, in, um, in Peter's lecture here, um, just before this tour, he described how this, this series, which has hundreds of photographs, we have 65 uh, photographs here at the Friedman Gallery, um, and his whole series has hundreds of photographs, but that he's divided it into about nine different sections um, or themes. And uh, one of those themes um, is dreams, which I think is very present, especially um, in person, here. It's difficult to translate, you know, photographs through, through a screen here, but um, in person, you really get a sense of a dreamlike quality, or as I described, a surreal quality. Um, and that's both through the color and I think the, you know, the weather or the atmosphere, the time of night he's taking it, the weather conditions or the seasons that he's taking it in. Um, those all add a quality of an almost dreamlike, but also the absence of humans. Um, and, and one of his uh, categories or themes of this series, Easton Nights, is stages, which I think is a fantastic um, correlation that these, these landscapes, empty landscapes, are, are, stage, are like stage sets um, with the lighting perfected, the colors presented there for you, the, the flat ground, and during the nighttime, they're empty, but during the daytime, um, we become the actors living our everyday lives. Um, and so that gives this um, a, real, a real magical sense, like I said, where the reality, real becomes almost surreal. Another um, category, which this is um, an example of here, is what he titles beehives. Um, and beehives are his photographs in Easton Nights of, of the home, and home in many different senses, and the layers and energy um, that homes reveal about themselves in the night with the lights, um, come emitting from, from windows and doors, seeing who's entering the house, who's exiting. They tell their stories of the layers of their history. But I just love the, um, the idea that they're beehives. And wherever we go, we always come back to our home at night. Let's see, I'll back up here so you get a good sense of this one, this is another home. Here's one where the lighting, the type of lighting that you see at night is really, <laughs> really on view here. And as he mentioned, things that you might walk by in your daily life, 
during the day really become the focal points and in, in objects of admiration or, or they, they, they have a special quality when viewed at night. Now this um, section here, we have a section in the exhibition that has a video as well. And for those of you who watched the artist, the fantastic artist lecture, um, um, you'll have a, some sense of, of what this is. This is a, a work in progress that Peter um, described. And um, it incorporates uh, photos from this series, Easton Nights, that are um, not not in the exhibition, but part of the entire series. So um, ones we weren't able to fit into the show, but he's um, paired them with music. Um, it, he separated in them into themes and paired them to music um, that really accentuate the different themes and qualities of the Easton Night series, but also um, night photography as well. So over here, you'll see these video montage, um, which I won't, go through um, all of the text here, but you can see that this particular video divides them into the themes dreams, colors, and stages. So I mentioned how um, he, he described um, the, the, the urban landscape as stages, and I mentioned um, the dream state, which I think is, is really um, clear in a number of photos that I'll point out um, specifically, but um, the color section, as I mentioned, with the rods and cones is really something of interest to me and really special because um, it's something we might recognize in images of the nighttime that they don't look um, as we might imagine, but the science behind it isn't something that was um, known to me. So understanding, um, understanding that these colors are there, um, but that we can't see them adds a sense of magic to them. And with the atmosphere, um, whether it's hazy or foggy or rainy, the colors and the reflective light that he captures um, creates these dense patches um, and pools of color um, in the photographs, which you'll see um, throughout as we continue through the exhibition. So this, this photograph here of Norton, uh, Norton oil structure here, um, this is an example um, of, of one of his works that he used as an example in his um, presentation about the sense of depth and three-dimensionality that nighttime photography um, gives to photographs that may not be as present in many um, traditionally daytime uh, photographs that ought often flatten the image and, and use geometric compositions. But nighttime photography with the multiple light sources and um, the contrast between the light and the darkness of, of the sky creates this real um, sense of three-dimensionality, sculptural quality, and definitely depth that, as um, Peter Wydeen says, draws you into the image. And as he, in, in this example here with the round structure, um, he, he explained, which, which I completely agree with, this, this structure would not look quite as three-dimensional in the daytime as he's able to capture here at night. And also that green, green light coming from the back as well. This one I think is, is, is one that I, I, I keep looking at every time I'm in the galleries that the green, the shade of green is something that I, I love, but I also see this one as being very strongly connected to the stage idea in seeing that, um, you know, he, he had said in his presentation that an opera could happen, you know, in front of or on these streets, that it's just begging for, you know, actors to start utilizing the space um, but the the three-dimensionality of the building and the mystery of what's around the corner is so heightened by the fact that it is um, 
at night. Now you'll see as we move through the exhibition here that there are um, free hanging works in double-sided uh, framed photographs that Peter has created. Um, and as he said in his uh, presentation, um, he views, he wants photographs to be viewed almost as a window. So wherever you go in that gallery space, there is um, photographs in front of you and behind you. Um, and this particular one, which I referenced uh, in the presentation, um, is called 25th Street Auto Sales. Um, and you can see that the snow, there's been a, 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 a small little snowstorm that's clung to these auto cars. Um, and with the lighting, I just find this one almost to, almost to look like sculpture, that the, the cars are sculptural. Um, and with the coating of the snow, you get all of the edges and volume and structure of the car that you wouldn't see um, in the daytime with just the paint. And as he described, the, the snow acts as an additional light source, as it's a reflective light source. So this work where you see the storm actually passing you know, behind the cars with the volume and its uh, dark clouds rolling behind. You see um, snow-covered trees in the right in a very blue lit parking lot behind. And then just coming from the top right hand corner, you have the street light, which almost looks like a heavenly beam <laughs> beating down on these used cars. Um, that I just think this, this work, there's, it's one of my favorites in the show and I, there's something to see each time you come up to it and appreciate about the composition, um, but also um, as it's discussed in the essays for our, for our catalog, gives you an appreciation of the mundane or a daily life. Um, it makes you walk through the world in a way and notice things that you may not have noticed um, before seeing these photographs. So there's a, David has asked a question here on Facebook that hopefully um, the artist might be able to respond to, um, asking if the artworks that are double hung put back to back, which I can show you here. Um, are they done that, done that for a reason? Did you do that for a reason? Now here's one, which obviously you can see um, the color being a focal point of this work called Pink Line and how the color with the atmosphere um, of the weather of that day just emitting and coating every object in its presence and filling the photograph from corner to corner. One thing I really appreciate about night photography and um, Peter's work in particular is, um, he, he didn't use this phrase, but um, I, I see that many of these works have a sense of mystery or unknown to them, which um, as he says, draws the viewer in. Um, they're, they're works that you can inhabit visually, but also um, they give a sense of other sensory experiences from being in the place. And perhaps it's because we are um, familiar with similar landscapes. Um, and so seeing a neon sign that says open or a roller skating um, alley, we might be able to be familiar with those spaces. But I really think it's the compositions and the quality uh, of light and the nighttime which offers you can imagine a sound, a smell, um, in some of them a taste <laughs> of what it might be to experience that, that actual location. And I hope you all can see that Peter uh, Wydeen has responded in, about the double hung frames, where he says initially it was to use the same frames which go on the walls. Um, but after doing it, I like the more sculptural quality as compared to the two-sided frames. So um, these are the two-sided frames that we're looking at. And I will show you in just a moment the double-hung uh, frames, which, which he's saying provided a more sculptural quality, which is definitely true.
Now, as I mentioned briefly that um, in conjunction with the exhibition, we've, we've published a beautiful um, catalog, which I'll show you in just a moment, that has two scholarly essays and reproduction prints of these photographs in them. And um, one of the things uh, that the, the essayist Leo Su had mentioned about um, Peter's works, which I think is really, uh, really something that helps focus the viewers on and helps you see the world differently after viewing Peter's work is the the complexity of textures that he's able to capture um, on different surface types. Um, and the complexity of these surface textures that are that are in our daily lives, but we do not notice until we see them lit at night and captured at night through these photographs. Now, um, as I back up, um, you'll see that these, these works hung here on a horizontal line are much smaller than the other works in the um, exhibition. And one question I had for Peter that I didn't have a chance to ask um, during the presentation was how, he, how, how you think about scale in your work and how you uh, determine what, what size print to use for a given given photograph. So you can see as I back up, these are a very intimate, intimate size. Here's another example, I think, of um, how words become the focal point and take on almost a completely different meaning um, with the absence of humans in the middle of the night. This is an example, I should say, um, that Peter used um, that he doesn't he doesn't find he doesn't go out into the night to take dark or macabre um, photographs yet some take on uh, a slightly macabre uh, feeling on their own and this is one he's entitled um, ghosts in gowns and um, I I find his work almost like I, when I've used the word uh, magical before but very um, very happy they they may be a little bit unsettling or surreal in their uh their their um color and composition that may make you think of not recognizing the place but the 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 feeling i get from these photographs is a magical um otherworldly but happy experience in a city that's being appreciated for being itself the mundane aspects of the city that a daily, that a regular average person would experience on in their daily lives. This is a this is um, a fantastic one, which he's he's put in the category of mimesis, where art kind of begins to replicate life. Um, we have another um, question here, Peter, which hopefully you'll have a chance to answer. Um, you mentioned exposing, um, in your presentation, you mentioned exposing the bright part of your scene so that um, 
the rest wouldn't be overexposed. How do you then adjust for what would be then underexposed foregrounds? A, a technical question there that I know there are a number of students were also watching students um, probably taking photography right now, watching the artist presentation that probably had many more technical questions as well. Now here we're looking at um, the double hung photographs which were mentioned and you can see on that that round work there that there are two fr frames hung back to back that give it a real sculptural quality and especially the round ones um, as a as a portal almost to see through or a window to see through. Um, one thing um, to note as you're looking at the, the works of art and in the catalog, you'll get a sense that many of them have a, that take on a sense of humor as well with the, um, with the titles Peter has given them and the kind of uh, the settings that were, that were there for him to capture. Um, that humor is involved in, in this series as well, in my opinion. I'll show you one in particular. After seeing both sides of this round portal-like frame. Here we have a work titled Tree Eats Mall, um, where you can see that the um, the tree is, is gobbling up the Phillipsburg Mall sign. In addition, you have this one on the, on the far right here that says, that's titled, I Thought I Saw a Bus. Even this work where um, the presence of humans is definitely um, evident in, in the composition um, seeing the streak of the, the bus window there, the white streak, it's almost as if there are, there are no humans on the bus. Okay, I hope that people are back. I apologize about that. The Wi-Fi cut out for some reason, so we lost the signal. Um, but we are back, and I'm ready to show you the rest of the exhibition. Thank you for sticking with us here. I'll wait a few minutes as people move, move, move to the new video, but... Um, I apologize about that. The Wi-Fi dropped the um, video for a moment. Okay, so moving on here. This is another example, I think, a great example of, of his category of, that, he's, that he's created called stages. And um, these mannequins in the wall, almost in the in the um, display case, taking on almost an actor's role, spotlit from above, becoming the stars of the show. The same with these flamingos, <laughs> plastic flamingos in a in a store window, as if they're. In, under the cover of darkness, they can lead their own lives. Here, there's, um, th it draws me back to, to um, Peter's comments about beehives. 
um, and and the the role of the home, the stories um, that get emitted from a home and its windows and doors, um, the privacy, which I think is real is symbolized with these these um, shrubs covering the front porch of the house. Um, but you can see here the side door is lit up, and that brings me to. Um, uh, Peter, another category Peter's created from his works called portals, um, which I think is really a poignant um, categorization of some of his of his photographs, where the portal or the door to the home or the business um, becomes the most important place in the structure itself, and whether it's a home where it's the most lit up um, and is the entrance portal to your comfort. Um, or whether it's a business where uh, it's lit up throughout the night, like in the flamingo image. Um, portals, uh, the doors themselves become really important. And as Peter has, has described where the photographs taking on a sense of the window, um, them themselves, the photographs themselves becoming portals into the view of this world. Here's a, here's a really great example of the types of colors that are visible or that exist um, in, a night, in the nighttime, um, but are not visible to our eyes. So these shadows of the trees, like I said, a magical quality where you, you can see the trees, you can see the woodland area across the street without seeing any trees. The shadows on this um, cement wall being green and gray and lavender and blue uh, give you the sense of the environment without having the visual of the space itself. So as I mentioned before, these sensory experiences that, uh, that are developed outside of the visual. This one is another one that um, has, has for me, does for me what um, Peter describes as drawing me in. And uh, if I drove by that, that, you know, vegetation during the daytime, I may not give it a second glance, but seeing it lit from above at night with the mist in the background um, and the, the trees further in, in the background just being shadows through the mist. Um, this to me really draws me in, as he says, that night photography has the ability to draw people in into its world that is created, like um, one of his early influences um, of romantic literature is creating worlds to draw people in. And this one in particular does that to me, where the, the vegetation, um, takes on almost a human form and the branches look as if their arms trying to pull you in to their own magical world. And the lighting in this one is just very um, peaceful. Um, but as I said, m a peaceful mysteriousness that I find in all these photographs where there, there is always something hidden and something being revealed that um, uh, draws the viewer into it and wants to learn more about the story and the place itself. Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to show, 
show you all the, the catalogs. You have a little bit of a sneak peek here. As David mentioned, um, that the catalog is free. Let's see if I can reach it without, here we go. And it has beautiful reproductions um, of Peter's work, some that are in the exhibition, some that are in the Easton Night series that are not in the exhibition. And um, I'll just flip through so you get a sense of, uh, of what's here. So works that, that we've seen, but also these critical essays um, that we have by Leo Su, Dana Sterling, and Yoab Freelander. And so we're very grateful to have these uh, critical essays on Peter's work in a beautiful, beautiful catalog that um, we hope people take with them during their visit. And if they can't be here in the galleries to let us know um, um, that they would like a copy because it really, it, it, it's a really special publication that we're proud to um, have made in conjunction with this show. I'm going to walk back towards um, the video work um, since we got to that right as there was a transition between periods um, and themes. So I hope you get a chance to see a little bit more of that. Um, if you, like I said, if you have any questions for the artist, please um, type them in below in the chat and we can make sure um, he gets those. I don't know if Peter is, is still on. Um, let me check here. But I, um, if, he, if he is, I would love to ask him about um, the different scales of his work in the exhibition and how he determines which works he wants to um, print in an intimate, small um, format and what he chooses to be um, the works that hang isolated, you know, free hanging um, back to back in the gallery space. Um, during uh, Peter's presentation, that, that Sitco uh, station reminded me, um, he used the work of Ed Ruscha, um as a comparison influence. Um, the, the famous standard gas station print that has the very elongated perspective and how that, um, that type of depth and perspective is possible in nighttime photography with the lighting, uh, with composition. And what I really um, feel as being present in almost all of Peter's works are these uh, telephone and electrical wires, which create planes and angles and, and, and depth that almost directs the eye where to look. And so these 
these um, lines running through um, his photographs in our daily lives, which control, you know, how communication is being processed, but also creates the line of activity uh, down the streets and across the streets and into our homes. So those of you watching, um, I just want to reiterate that the show is at the Friedman Gallery until November 25th, um, and that the gallery is still open to the public. There's some um, coronavirus protocol um, that's necessary to enter the gallery, like wearing a mask. Um, but the, the hours are 9 to 5, Tuesday through Friday. And on Sundays, we're open 1 to 4. So if you are in the area um, or close to the area, I would really encourage you to come um, in person to look at these photographs and, and really um, be able to engage with them because they really give you a magical uh, a feeling that is really special when you see the prints in person that's hard to, hard to convey through the screen itself. Um, and as I said, the catalog, which um, is a great keepsake of uh, this series, which um, Peter said in his presentation, he feels is coming to a natural end after taking hundreds of photographs over five years. So we feel really um, grateful and honored to be able to um, display this work in the Friedman Art Gallery um, as the series comes to, comes to a close in the coming years. And finally, I'll just um, come over back to the introduction panel for those of you joining, um, joining later and didn't see it at the beginning. Um, Easton Nights is a story which grew from the unique and uncommon valley in which the city lies and is told with the images of unpeopled landscapes taken at night. Here in the small hours, the world we see as mundane cascades into dream like a surreal scene from a Guillermo de, del Toro film, trash bins and Toyotas, stop signs and doorways, all become animated. They lean, they stretch, they emanate, all with umbrageous hues, which seem to exhale from the night's own personal color wheel. Scattered signs give the words, marking our place and time, while geometries show our relentless effort to arrange our world in a box. These are our stages, with the houses our beehives, the machines our toys, and the doors our portals. Complete, they are a mimesis of our daily life, as can only shown in the mystical emptiness of night. Then with the dawn comes the beginning, where we all wake and act, all while these magical and romantic worlds return to sleep. And so I'm just going to leave it at that with Peter Wydeen's words about this um, series. And um, like I said, encourage you all to come see the works of art and really experience the installation, which um, I believe, you know, has an impact on how you go out and view the rest of the world after seeing these photographs. So I want to thank you all so much again for joining us and thank you, um, Peter Wydeen, for sharing his work and allowing us to share it with the Albright and Reading community. So thank you so much. Have a great evening and we hope to see you in the galleries soon. Take care.